So I own a few boats, like this one and this one. The problem with these boats is that they are very carbon intensive. As you guys know, speed boats require fuel, which is usually unleaded 95 or 91 if you're being cheeky, to head out to the dive site, do your diving, and then come back. Well, I generally try and make and take friends out on these boats so we can share the fuel costs and the carbon emissions between ourselves. Every boat trip still produces polluting greenhouse gases when we want to go for a dive. And something both me and my partner really wanted to do for a long time is to get a sailing boat. Now, as you know, sailing boats require the power of the wind to get from point A to point B. There is still some fuel for some motoring in case the wind's going in the wrong direction or it's completely flat. But mostly, generally, there are a lot less carbon emissions when you're using a sailboat in comparison to a very fast speedboat with a huge engine. So in today's video, I'm really excited to share with you guys that we bought a sailboat. If you guys follow my shorts, you would have seen a few shorts here and there about the sailboat, but this is it. This is uh, us buying a sailboat without knowing how to sail. This part of my series to decarbonize my whole diving experience and to share with you what I learned about how we can be the most eco-friendly, eco-conscious divers possible. Because I believe the more we dive, the more we get involved in the ocean, the better our understanding is of the ocean and the better we can help protect it. I also want to hear from you. How do you dive? Do you do shore dives, which are probably the less carbon intensive? However, here in Ailey Beach, we have crocodiles, so we're not choosing to do that. Or do you go on commercial trips with other people where the fuel is spread out between all of you? Do you have a speedboat like this? Or are you part of the new sailing family I'm hoping to join? Let me know. I would love to hear what your experience with diving is. I'm very excited about the series. So come on, let's go on the sailboat. Here we are on board our beautiful fa. As I mentioned before, I did not film the sailing part, but here we are the next day after sleeping on board one night, getting ready to move to the next spot where we motor to. So as you can see, I did a little bit of cleaning, grabbed my toothbrush, and decided this would be a perfect time to give you guys a tour of the place. The fa is 12 meters long, and it has three cabins, or six berths, meaning it can have six people sleeping on it. This is her, this is the living room area. I tried to make some nice decorations. I absolutely love this space. The view's gorgeous, and this is our little room up the front where me and Justin sleep. We can both fit in here quite comfortably and Pinto likes to join us. We added these bags for some storage and as you can see, it's quite a comfortable little spot and the rocking of the boat certainly puts us to sleep nicely. There's also this cupboard space. As you can see, I like to roll up my clothes. This is one we share for the both of us as well as hanging space for jackets and long sleeves. This is the little toilet. We don't have a working shower. However, the toilet uses salt water so you can flush it and this this is what that sounds like. In the main cabin, we have our little lucky mascot, as well as storage for fruits and veggies, and the stove which swings, meaning it doesn't spill if we are cooking while we are sailing or doing any crosses. I have my tea and spice section, and then of course a whole area because I love cooking on board, and a whole area for books and booze. This is the control panel, which has all the switches for lights, electricity, fans. This is the starboard side coffin, as we call it. Two people can sleep in here, so we have space. And then the port side cabin, which can fit one person and a half. I did bring some fresh passion fruits that I like to hang in one of these bags. The boat has fully charging capabilities for our phones, and we get to use a fan if we need. Sailing, it does 
mean we can grab a beer in the morning and just enjoy our day in the sun. Come on, you're not allowed to be there. Come on, up. Come on, Pins. Hey, let's go. Go, go, go. Go, go. Up. Up. Go on, up. Go on. Once I put away the big camera for filming, I grabbed my phone so I could film a few shorts as well as just get some footage of the day for my friends and family. I haven't showered yet, as you can tell, and this is the view from our little cabin where we ended up docking. So it was near Whit Sunday Island. I decided it was a perfect time to grab my book, head out to the bow of the boat, and do a little bit of reading. As you can tell, I'm pretty stoked about it all. However, as soon as nighttime hit, disaster struck, and one of our batteries, which is responsible for starting the engine, stopped working. So we had to call for help. While we were waiting for help, which ended up coming the next morning, so it wasn't too bad, we saw these beautiful squid swimming around in the dark. They get attracted by the light of the boat, so you can see us shining some torches into the water, which causes little fish to be attracted to the light, which then causes the squid to be attracted to them. Here is my partner coming back with the dogs from letting them poop, and as you can tell, they are pretty pooped after a big day. Pinto absolutely loves sleeping on the boat, but honestly, wherever we are, he is happy to be. Pinsy, what are you doing, hey? Pinsy! No, I got a good After a comfortable night sleeping on the boat, our friends joined us, made me a little sandwich, and we headed out to a dive spot. Now, unfortunately, this was exactly when my GoPro decided to quit working, so I did not get any underwater footage of this particular spot. I did film my outfit of the day. It was still quite warm during this time and absolutely stunning. I absolutely love diving in the Whitsunday region because it's always something new. We saw some sharks and some rays as well as a turtle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little adventure and check out any of my dive videos if you want to learn more. Make sure to join my journey to decarbonize my diving experience and let me know what are your thoughts. Some of my recent videos about how to buy dive gear without killing the planet and how to be an eco-conscious diver would be a great video to you watch next.